being a colon cancer survivor, I was struggling in my marriage and balancing everything. It was a difficult, it was a, com a complicated time. Yes, we're tired, we're parenting, we're juggling aging parents, we're juggling jobs, we're juggling, you know, infertility. I don't know, everyone is juggling. Barbara, a vibrant mother of three children, found joy in activities like walking, playing tennis, and engaging in triathlons. However, as she began experiencing discomfort in her body, the laziness and the sensation of blockage in her gut system made her realize that her body had not been performing well. Despite consulting doctors, they consistently attributed her symptoms to dietary sensitivities, advising her to avoid wheat and dairy products while increasing her intake of water and juices. Even some indicated the diagnosis of hemorrhoids and irritable bowel syndrome, IBS, but her intuition told her there was more to it. Barbara's misery began with mere stomach pain, a gestational issue, leading her to seek medical help, visit doctors, and follow the prescribed medications. However, her health wasn't as normal as it had been after the checkups. As time passed, it was hard for her to eat as the stomach pain became constant and her energy levels started to deplete. Despite facing struggles in her marriage, work life, and deteriorating health, Barbara remained resilient, even continuing her marathon training. However, her performance was impacted as she couldn't run as swiftly and experienced shortness of breath and body pains. Despite pushing herself to increase her running distance by an extra five miles after each session, she soon realized that every run was increasingly difficult for her. The pain started to pile up until it became unbearable, causing her a severe stomach ache, after which she was taken in an ambulance to the hospital. The staff conducted scans of her stomach, after which it was revealed that the food was not being processed properly, and that's why she had been having the pain. After prolonged pain and suffering, Barbara reached out for several consultations, and one of the doctors suggested having a colonoscopy, which was scheduled six months later. After six months, Barbara met the gastroenterologist to schedule the colonoscopy. She had to get new scans of her stomach, after which the doctor checked her scans, which came out to be doubtful, so her doctor suggested Barbara to stay in the hospital and get a colonoscopy as soon as possible. However, no matter how alarming it sounded, Barbara pushed her colonoscopy back a week later due to her busy schedule. After the week, Barbara finally had her tests done, but her pathology report came out to be a big shock. Two days after her colonoscopy, the gastroenterologist called her in the middle of the day and informed her about the report that she was diagnosed with cancer. Barbara was shocked, but still kept herself calm and considering it as a precancerous cell developed in her stomach. Despite having blurred vision, she drove her kids to school. She also informed her father, who told her that her condition was not going to be very serious. With much patience and resilience, she waited for her next appointment scheduled for the following Monday. Barbara was in a state of denial when she attended the appointment at Sloan Kettering Hospital still believing her condition to be a precancerous one, which according to her could have been removed by a minor surgery like her father had undergone once. However, Barbara met a harsh reality confronting her doctor, after which she learned that her treatment required a lengthy and complex surgical process, which broke her down completely as she couldn't contain her emotions. Barbara's feelings were tumultuous and overwhelming when she finally came to know the disease she had been battling for years. However, she picked herself up and prepared herself mentally for the surgery, which proved to be a challenge for her. One more thing that weighed on her heart more than anything was that her Hanukkah preparations and celebrations, which she had planned with her husband, went down the drain. Amidst her optimistic imaginings of celebrating Hanukkah, the surgery remained a sobering reality. Barbara was hospitalized two days before her surgery and had a series of blood tests. She was also starved a day before her surgery to prepare her completely for her surgery. Finally came the surgery day, when Barbara found herself with a black mark drawn under her belt line, 
which was for attaching an ileostomy bag, which concerned her whether it would stay after surgery or be removed. Despite her fears, Barbara remained strong going through a successful surgery as the doctors had taken out 25 lymph nodes from her intestine and they were sent off to the pathology. Barbara was given ice chips instead of food and was in severe pain. According to her, the pain was more than what she had during childbirth, but she had a therapist to help her with her movements, and that's how Barbara started walking days after the surgery. However, the disappointing aftermath of the surgery for Barbara was the ban on desirable foods she wanted to eat, but only had ice chips to eat. After seven days of surgery, the pathology report came and the doctor gave her the good news that she was safe as the cancer had gone into the lymph nodes, which were already removed. Still, to completely flush it out, she had to undergo six months of chemotherapy, a thought that was already painful for her. Despite the relief of being safe, the necessity of chemotherapy cast a shadow over her joy and her life seemed to be hijacked, but she had to fight with all this. She had 12 rounds of chemotherapy twice a week for six months, during which she was infused with oxaliplatin and on one regimen, Folfox. Then she went to Cape Cytobine. However, this wasn't suited to her health and she switched to seven days of oral pills. Cancer, being a potentially fatal illness, necessitates treatments that can be as demanding as the disease itself. Barbara underwent chemotherapy, which triggered numerous side effects, intensifying her situation. She experienced neuropathy in her fingers, along with numbness, weakness, and pain in both her fingers and limbs. She felt tingling in her fingers, comparing it to the sensation of drinking something cold like glass shards. It was extremely uncomfortable, making drinking cold water unbearable. So she decided to avoid cold drinks altogether and preferred warmer options. Her first walking experience was also traumatizing as it felt as though poison coursed through her entire body. These side effects significantly impacted her daily life. She found herself unable to drive and struggled to maintain focus. She had intense nausea for days and despite experimenting with ginger tea blends, acupuncture sessions and massage therapy, nothing provided relief to her. Despite the inability to walk, she walked as much as she could and gained the strength to walk in the snow and inhale fresh air. It was the only time when she felt she was an active person as she was before, despite her 54 weeks of battle with cancer. She tried to be positive for her mental and physical health and watched a lot of HGTV. However, due to her vision problem, she couldn't read books or watch her favorite shows to divert her attention from her misery. The entire time from diagnosis to the treatment after the healing procedure, Barbara faced a lot more than her internal strength, but she fought with everything bravely. She, being a hope to her kids, acted bravely and fought this disease.